communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Well, let's continue to worship. You are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song. You are beautiful, Beautiful, my sweet. 
Let us pray. Well, holy God, we present ourselves to you this morning. We've made it here to this worship space. Some of us have hit the snooze alarm five times to get here. And others have already run three miles or read the newspaper. But we made it. Now help us empty, Lord. Empty ourselves of everything that's outside of us so that we might be filled with your word, your body, and your presence. Amen.
Thank you. I thought we'd move the sharing of the peace. That's what I was qualifying there. Why don't we uh, share God's love and God's peace with each other now? Florence, God's peace. Children can come on forward. Well, hello, everyone. How are you guys today? Good. Good. Oh, that's awesome. You guys sound kind of awake. How are you today? Good. Good. So I went shopping this weekend, and I'm so excited I had to show you what I bought. Do you guys want to see what I bought? Okay, let me sit down and show you. How many of you guys bought new things for school? A lot of you guys buy new things. Well, sometimes I like to reuse my stuff, like my backpack. I love this backpack. And since it's not broken or torn, I reuse it from year to year. But let me show you what I got. Look at this cool folder I got. What do you guys use folders for? Putting your work in it or maybe your homework from school. I love using these. What's this? It's a highlighter. What about this? Anyone know what that is? Yeah, I'm not very good at math, so I use calculators quite a bit. How about this? A ruler. What do you use a ruler for? Measure. Measuring things. I have a red pen. These are fun, too. Sharpie. Oh, and I have a stapler. This one I reused because I didn't use all the pages last year. A notebook, and I love these things. What's that? A binder, and I have a lot of papers in here as well. What do you notice I have on all of my school supplies? Yep. My name. Why do you think I have my name labeled on all of my supplies? Yep. It doesn't get lost, right? If I had my pencil during math class, and then it's time for social studies, and I don't have my pencil, and I'm like, oh my goodness, where'd my pencil go? My teacher's going to be so mad at me. But then my classmate says, oh, hey, Miss Betsy, I see your pencil over here. Well, would he know that my pencil was there if it didn't have my name on it? No. no. So we label our school supplies so they don't get lost. And you know what? In the same way, God labels us. When we were baptized, he labeled us with the Holy Spirit. He put the Holy Spirit in our heart, and he put his name on our heart, showing that we belong to him, that we are a child of God. And so as a child of God, that means he's going to keep us safe, he's going to care for us, he's going to love us and protect us. And in the same way, we have to make sure that we act like a child of God. So we act like Jesus, right? Because Jesus was perfect. So we need to be kind and loving to our friends and our classmates. We need to be respectful to our teachers, listen to our teachers, and follow directions, right? And that'll keep us safe. So the really cool thing that we're doing today is we're going to bless you guys. We're going to pray for you for the beginning of this school year to make you safe, to protect you, to let you know that God is with you throughout the school year, okay? So Pastor Liz is here to do that. And after the service, I am so excited for the beginning of the school year that I bought all of you ice cream sandwiches. So I know. So if you go to the playground after service the bouncy house will be set up too and you get an ice cream treat how cool is that yes. yeah because we're children of god we got to celebrate that right all right can everyone stand up? stand up and any other students high school students college students anybody who is start graduate students come on you can stand up i won't make you walk down <laughs> you know, our older folks. But if you can stand up, we will do a blessing to include all our students. 
God, we pray for these, your children of God, grown and growing. We pray that you would be with them as they start a new year in classes, that you would open their minds and their hearts to learn about your world, to learn about you. Bless them and keep them. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now, if any teachers could come down so that these kids up here can surround you so we can bless you. We're going to help our teachers, right? Because we got we to gotta pray them up, right? Yeah, you think so? All right, so why don't we move in a little half circle around them? Can we move down? Can we step off the, the uh, steps? There's a word for that. All right, so teachers, you can come in the middle. We're going to surround you. All right, can everybody get around? All our teachers here. Can everybody get around? Everybody get around. Miss Betsy, why don't you come in the middle too? All right. Okay, can you put your hand on the shoulder of a teacher? Think you can do that? All right, we're going to pray for them. Lord God, we pray for our teachers that you would bless them and keep them. May their hearts be open to your love so that they can share that love with the children you have entrusted to them, the students that you have given them the gifts to teach. Keep them this year. Walk with them, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, thank you. Yes, and we have apples for our teachers. If you would like to give an apple to a teacher, you may. The apples are for them, though. It's our gift. All right, as we head back to our seats, we invite our Smith Hughes family to come on up because they have a good message for us. Full of trouble and I thought, how we ever get so far down? And how's it ever gonna turn around? So I turned my eyes to heaven. I thought, God, why don't you do something? When I just couldn't bear the thought of people living in poverty and children sold into slavery, the thought disgusted me. So I shook my fist at heaven. I said, God, why don't you do something? Yeah. 
have to do something I'm so tired of talking about how we are God's hands and feet when it's easier to say than to be live like angels of apathy who tell ourselves it's all right somebody else will do something well I don't know about you but I'm sick and tired of life with no desire I don't want to flame I want to fire I want to be the one to stand up and say I'm gonna do something A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body, we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. Please pray with me for a moment. 
God, we thank you for gathering us here in this place. Open our hearts, our minds to your word, that it may take root in our lives and grow and grow and grow. In your name we pray. Amen. There's a quote in my office that I wrote on an index card back uh, during my internship year in Phoenix. Then I even took that index card back with me to Chicago and now back with me here to uh, Ohio. And it's a quote from Thomas Merton, a Catholic monk. The good that you will do will not come from you, but from the fact that you have allowed yourself in obedience of faith to be used by God's love. The good that you will do will not come from you, but from the fact that you have allowed yourself in obedience of faith to be used by God's love. I think to be used by God's love is another way of saying discerning God's will. The words of Paul in our text. We are to discern God's will, to be used by God's love, to live out God's reality, God's kingdom. So this quote in my office is there on the corkboard to remind me of this. And I both love it and hate it. I love it because when I'm feeling overwhelmed or stressed or like I'm swimming through muddy waters and I can't see my path clearly, I can read that quote and take a deep breath and remember, it ain't about me. It's about God working in me and through me. And I hate it because that quote reminds me that it ain't about me. That it's nothing that I come up with brilliantly, my plans, my ideas, my thoughts, that it all is God working in me and through me. God's love. Paul calling us to discern the will of God, what is good and acceptable and true. Thomas Merton saying, be used by God's love. How? How when it doesn't even come from me? I hear Paul's first words. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Some days, we're just thankful that we showed up to church on Sunday. Like Pastor Carl prayed, some days, we just are glad that we managed to drag ourselves out of bed, having hit that snooze on the alarm clock a few too many times. Some days we've come from weeks or days filled with worry and struggle and hurt and pain. Some days all we could do was to show up. So what does it mean when Paul says, present your bodies as a living sacrifice? It does mean show up. Show up with everything. We present our bodies, our whole selves. Everything, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Present to God, present here. The hopes, the plans, the fears, present to God, present here. Present your bodies does not mean make sure all the wrinkles are smoothed out, the warts are removed, the calluses are hidden, the dirt is cleaned off, and then God will accept this living sacrifice. It's come with everything. Present your body, your whole self, But not just Sunday morning. Not just when we've successfully stopped hitting our snooze button. 
show up every day with our whole lives in God's hands. A living sacrifice is a life lived. A living sacrifice is a life lived in and through and by God's love. Showing up every day before God, knowing that we need God, knowing God's love for the good, the bad, and the ugly of our lives. Releasing that control that we've gripped so hard on everything else in our lives, trying to hide it from everybody else, including ourselves, and saying, this too, Lord, I give to you. Show up, present, present your bodies, your whole selves. It all starts there. Everything else Paul says, do not conform to this world, but be transformed. Use your gifts in the body of Christ. It all starts here. Present your bodies, your whole selves, as a living sacrifice, which is your worship. Worship is not simply what we do on Sunday mornings. And a life of worship, a life of knowing and being used by God's love will have us swimming upstream from all the things clamoring for our attention, for our worship in this world. It'll have us crying out, Lord, help me, because we can't do it any other way. It will have us not quite fitting not being fashioned by a world filled with consumerism, nationalism, violence, apathy, indulgence. It will have us not putting any gift above another, nor thinking more highly of ourselves, because it ain't about me. We will be a community, community for every body, every person who shows up is valued. Pastor Carl sent me this story this week from the podcast radio uh, program StoryCorps. They gather stories from people all over, uh, usually little short blurbs of three to five minutes telling something from their lives. And this week, the story was from Dr. William Weaver. And he tells about being one of the 14 black students who integrated into a white high school in Knoxville, Tennessee in 1964. He talks about showing up on that first day and about 30 minutes in, when the teacher is doing the roll call, gets to his name and calls him Bill, he says, my name is William. And the teacher calls him the N-word and suspends him. First day, 30 minutes in. And it goes downhill from there. Teachers belittling him accusing him, not teaching. His grades slip and slip and slip, and the student who once did so well is now failing in school. And one day, a teacher from his old school shows up at his doorstep, Mr. Hill, asks him, how are you doing? And when he tells him that he's struggling, he says, you come see me every day after school. And on Saturdays, you come see me. 
and all your old teachers. We will all gather together and we will teach you and tutor you. So every day, he met with his old teachers and his grades began to improve and he got better and better. And regardless of what his teachers in his present school were doing, he passed. And then in his senior year, when no one had talked to him about going to college, when no counselor had asked him what was his future going to be, he got in the mail a scholarship from Howard University, HBCU in D.C. Years later, when he was at a funeral, he ran into Mr. Hill again. And he told him, you know what? I never applied for that scholarship. Mr. Hill said, I know. I did. And he had never realized how else Mr. Hill had showed up in his life. He tells that story now looking back, thinking of how, how sometimes in youth you think that you can just do it all on your own. And here, here, he realizes even more so how someone helped him along the way. But I thought of this story with our Romans text and the contrast of two different groups of teachers sharing their gifts. And what it is to truly show up and be present. I imagine in 1964 that a whole lot of people were probably churchgoers. But who was showing up as the kingdom of God. There are doorsteps and there are places and spaces God will call us to show up in. But we will only know them with the help of God. We will only see them with the Spirit of Christ in us. We need God to fashion us, form us, transform us. When we show up with our whole selves, the good, the bad, the ugly, before God, we are transformed. God's grace and mercy shows up in our lives. We, the body of Christ, become a community of transformed nonconformity, as Martin Luther King says. Wounds that are healed, truths that are spoken, lives that are changed shaped and fashioned by God's love. As I've reflected on this word, there's a song that's been playing in my head. Music tends to be a way to say, Lord, how? How? Open my life and my way and my being to you. Help me in my words and my song to do what I can't do for myself. The song is I give myself away. Because in giving ourselves to God, in our worship, in our being, we find ourselves in God's love.
we give ourselves to you, but help us in the giving. Help us in the dreaming and the planning. Take it all. Release us so that we may find ourselves in your love, in your purpose, in your mercy. In your name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand as we join in singing and taking up our offering. you would lift them from our lives. Show us the path that you have for us. We pray for those who are struggling with addiction or depression, who are fearful for their lives in places of violence, in homes and communities and all around the world. pray for those who seek shelter, who need your comfort. We pray especially today for Kimberly Beery, Meg Reidler, Holland Soppy, Christine Ickes, David Schaefer, Linda Olson, Pat Ramsey, Harold Kaler, Susan Franklin, Lauren Blake, Holly Hessler, Daryl Sickles, Mary Hodge, Cindy Baptiste, Sue McClid, Neil Stackhouse, Bev Healy, Debbie Drum, Bill Matheny, Susie Anderson, Paul Newell, Lisa Powers and her family, Betsy Barkalo and her family, and others we name in this moment. We know you hear each 
each of these names, each of the cries of our heart, and you come to heal. You are merciful and gracious, forgiving, and one who transforms. Be present to us now as we remember the promise that you gave to us through your Son, and that on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Holy Spirit, come to us. Transform this meal, transform our hearts, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All are welcome to this table. Uh, you may be seated as we invite our communion assistants forward and then all may come for wine and bread.
Holy God, fed and nourished at your table. Help us to delight your world with your presence by showing up and being your people. Amen. Uh, I, uh, we got a ton of things that are going on. Uh, Pastor Liz took all my time, though, so <laughs> just like that. Um, so <clears throat> as you're leaving, we've got a um, rally day raffle for a, a beautiful quilt out there. A buck a ticket is all it costs, and the more tickets you buy, the better the deal gets. So like if you dropped $100 out there, you would leave with like 5,000 tickets. So, so go, go and uh, take part in the raffle. Our uh, sewing and quoting group is actually a pretty large group. Uh, everything they do is servant ministry. All the, all the stuff they do, it goes out to our local community, um, to the metro area, e even out further than that to the world. So support them and you're doing a good thing. Uh, and uh, Linda, our administrator, wanted us to hear that we had got a window of opportunity to join the, the prayer chain. For some reason, that's more complicated than I can understand. You can't just join the prayer chain anytime. But right now, there's this window that you can. And if, if you want to join the prayer chain, call up uh, Linda this week because she said it's closing August 31st. And, and you'll have to ask her exactly why that's happening because I'm not sure I understand. And, and the other thing is we have uh, great volunteers that sit out on our desk uh, throughout the day, Monday through Friday when our preschool starts. Uh, they work a shift from like nine to noon and noon to three. And uh, they welcome our children. They, uh, they all carry guns to keep out intruders, <laughs> um, stuff like that. So they, they are a good gift. Our preschool parents often comment how wonderful it is to have those parents out there and, um, and, and how appreciated they are. So if you'd like to do that, there's a couple of those spots open too. So call Linda, our administrator, for that also. Uh, Pastor Liz is having a high school group today, right? Parents and students are meeting tonight at the church, 5.30. Meeting, are you feeding them if you're bringing them in 5.30? Are you feeding them? She'll have, she'll have dinner. She's going to go home and make a crock pot roast or something right now. So there you go. <laughs> so 530 here at, at the church, uh, high school and teachers. And our preschool, we're going to be um, blessing our preschool teachers at the next service. But they've set up a book fair that's out there in the Welcome Center, or in the Fellowship Paul actually. So take a look at their books here. Buy your child a book or grandkid a book and, and enjoy enjoy that opportunity too. Did I get everything I needed, Pastor? Why don't we stand? We'll have our blessing. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you all with favor and grant you God's peace. Amen.
I'm doing pub theology tomorrow night at 7 o'clock at Prost, uh, a really great craft brewery right around the corner. Uh, so come and join us. We're doing denominations tomorrow. Why are we so fractured in the world? So 7 o'clock to 8.30 tomorrow night. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.